you know, with this supposedly being Scarlett Johansson's last MCU film, it feels like that universe is now widowed with her gone. <laughs> What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about a brand new MCU release, Black Widow. Before we begin, let me know in the comments what your thoughts on this movie were, if you already saw it, or if you were planning on seeing it, and make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like these reviews as it helps me out immensely by getting my channel out there. And if you're new here, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with reviews of new releases, older films, hidden gems, and so much more on a near daily basis. But let's not waste any more time and let's talk about Black Widow. This once again stars Scarlett Johansson as the title character, aka Natasha Romanoff, who confronts the darker parts of her ledger when a dangerous conspiracy with ties to her past arises. Pursued by a force that will stop at nothing to bring her down, Natasha must deal with her history as a spy and the broken relationships left in her wake long before she became an Avenger. Taking place in between Captain America Civil War and Avengers Infinity War, this is written by Eric Pearson, who also co-wrote Godzilla vs. Kong, and it's directed by Kate Shortland in her fourth feature film Behind the Camera. And after a year of waiting, it's finally here. Well, more like 11 years worth of waiting, as Black Widow was a character who fans long wanted to see get a solo film since she was first introduced in Iron Man 2. And it took till now, after spoiler alert, she was killed off in Endgame for them to make this, which just amazes me. Now, MCU fans have been clamoring for this one for years. Now, I do enjoy the MCU, and even love several of those films, though I wouldn't necessarily say I was eager to get this particular film. Not that I dislike the Black Widow character or Scarlett Johansson, because I always thought she did a really solid job with the character. But for the longest time, I felt the way she was written, there was never anything there to really make me want to see more of her. Whenever her character was explored, it was mainly just to act in support of the Avengers, while any hints of her past felt to me like it just tapped into genre tropes that we've seen before and not done in a really unique way. And this isn't to say that Romanoff is an inherently uninteresting character because like the rest of the Marvel heroes and villains, there is a dense layered history to draw from in the comics to use as inspiration, and I ultimately placed the blame on the writers and studio heads for squandering her potential. Because it felt like they never truly knew what to do with this character beyond acting as another piece of the Avengers puzzle. And even Scarlett Johansson herself recently spoke out against her characterization when she was first introduced. It wasn't until Infinity War and Endgame that I felt she got the truly substantive material that she both deserved deserved and did her character justice. Now, unfortunately, despite this placing her front and center here, I wouldn't say this quite matched the great character work we got from those two films. And while it's certainly fine, it's just not the incredible character study that I wish this could have been. Now, I do want to say before going any further, I did like this movie overall. I want to make that perfectly clear. I do have my fair share of criticisms for it, but I don't want this whole review to be all about them. So, First, let's talk about some positives. Now, I found it very entertaining. I found the action scene to be well done. A few of them do get a little bit into ridiculous territory, like a scene where two characters are falling from the sky and there's debris all around them, and somehow they both totally miss all that debris and they have a parachute and are allowed to make one of these squeakiest clean falls that goes a bit beyond the suspension of disbelief for me. But for the most part, the action was all well choreographed and a lot of it was fun. And it even gets a bit self-referential. Like most of the MCU films, this is very fun funny, and some of the jokes here are Marvel making fun of itself. There's a recurring gag, for example, where Yelena, Florence Pugh's character, comments on the pose Natasha makes whenever she's fighting, and she'll constantly refer to her as a poser, or anytime the pose is made, some sort of comment follows. So I thought this was very funny, and I thought Florence Pugh herself was excellent here, because she's someone who, even if the movie itself is either okay or just good but not great, she still knocks it out of the park each and every time, and she once again did that here, giving Elena such a fun and charismatic personality that I think will turn her into a quick fan favorite. Now, this was suspected by many people going in, but this is also definitely a passing the baton sort of film. Without getting too much into spoilers, but with this pretty much being Johansson's last MCU appearance, this was focused a bit on giving future heroes within this universe more of the spotlight. While this is technically Natasha's story, and Johansson does get enough to do, in some ways she does 
does take a bit of a back seat to let her co-stars really shine, in particular Florence Pugh. And anytime she was the center of the action, she was awesome. And David Harbour was another nice standout as the Red Guardian, who's this father figure to both Natasha and Yelena, who also provides a good portion of the film's comedic relief. Plus, I did think Kate Shortland's direction was pretty solid for the most part. Now, I'm not familiar with her other films, but I took a look at her filmography, and she's mostly done smaller, independent works prior to this, and I do think the moments here in which she can work on a smaller scale were really nice. Like, there are quite a few moments, especially early on, of Natasha by herself, isolated in the woods, reflecting on pretty much everything, and I thought those were some beautiful looking moments between the cinematography and the camera work, and the fact that Shortland was able to capture some nice emotional beats without characters having to say much. So I thought those were all really well done, plus she can clearly pull off bigger moments that are grander in scale as, like I said, for the most part, the big ensemble sequences and action-oriented moments all looked fine. And I will reiterate that all these elements were more than enough to keep me entertained, and I found the movie to be enjoyable overall. That being said, while it was nice that we got this very long overdue film, in some ways, this still felt more like a movie that we only got because fans asked for it, rather than because Marvel wanted to give Black Widow the great story she deserved. It doesn't completely feel that way, but mostly. Now, am I saying that fan service is necessarily a bad thing? Of course not. At the end of the day, these are characters that many people have grown to love over the years, and while you want a filmmaker to be able to enact their vision for a film, you still want to be able to give audiences something they want, and I totally get that. So I obviously understand why this was made. It's just that this once again goes back to this long-running issue that Marvel seems to have with this one particular character. They mostly don't seem to know what to do with Natasha, because not only does this story feel so inconsequential for the most part when you think about it, especially given that it's a prequel and we know there's really not too much here affecting Romanoff's overall MCU journey, but it also doesn't have the strongest emotional core. This tries to explore the themes of family, as much of the film sees Natasha revisiting her past and reconnecting with the people who she briefly spent time with as a child. While she was part of this Russian undercover agent program, Natasha and Yelena pose as sisters in Ohio with the Red Guardian, really named Alexei, posing as their father, while Rachel Weiss, as a woman named Melina, poses as their mother. And we explore the dynamic among all four of them as they reunite so many years later. The only thing is, I never fully felt like I was invested in seeing them all come together and get along once more. When we see them posing as a family, it's really only this one brief sequence of happiness at the very beginning of the movie that we got before their mission ends and they all go their separate ways. And for most of their initial interactions years later, they're all fairly hostile to one another for a good part of the film. Now I know with this movie already being 134 minutes long, you don't want to bog it down too much more so that it'll cause it to be 3 hours or anything. It's just that these are all new characters who we only see together for a brief moment of happiness at the very beginning before the main events kick in. And it's not like we got enough time to really be invested in this once happy dynamic so that it would allow us to really feel the emotional weight of them all reuniting and getting back on good terms with one another. And it just never hit quite as hard as it should have, especially as we get to later on in the movie. Without getting into spoilers, there are certain aspects of this particular storyline that get wrapped up a bit too neatly. There is also a character in here named Rick Mason, played by O.T. Fabignol, who's this old friend of Natasha's, and early on, he helps her out while she's on the run and supplies her with whatever it is she needs. And this is another character who we've never once seen before in the MCU, yet we're supposed to care that he and Natasha had this deep personal connection with one another, and there were these hints that he was interested in her romantically. But while I thought the performance was fine, this felt more like a throwaway character who was more just there to keep things moving along. It was clear they were meant to feel nicer than they ultimately were, but despite this attempt at giving these scenes a warmer feel, I didn't quite buy the chemistry between Mason and Romanoff, nor did I feel any real emotional weight in these sequences. There were a few brief moments that made me chuckle, but that's about it. And between that and some of the issues I had with the family storyline, it makes the film's sometimes weak emotional core a lot more noticeable. And while all this is going on, there's a storyline regarding the undercover agency that once trained all our main characters, known as the Red Room and run by a man named Drakoff, played by Ray Winstone, brainwashing people to be trained killers, with an assassin known as Taskmaster, who's silent, always wears a mask, and has very precise movements, 
working for Drakov. And I found this storyline to be very underwhelming, to be perfectly honest. Ray Winstone's a fine actor, and he does a solid job with the material, but the character didn't have that much of a personality, and he felt like your average run-of-the-mill villain, making him probably one of Marvel's weakest villains in quite some time. Plus, a big thing throughout this movie, mostly brought up as a joke, is Alexei constantly asking Natasha about Captain America, comparing himself to Captain America. And I couldn't help but feel, despite the joking nature of these sequences, that this tried to be something in the vein of a Captain America movie to a degree. Especially Captain America the Winter Soldier, which is fitting considering Romanoff is a major character in that film. And it felt most prevalent in this Red Room storyline, an undercover agency that's mind-controlling super soldiers with a deadly assassin working for them, all while the main character confronts their past, this is basically a version of Captain America the Winter Soldier, which, I'll be perfectly honest, isn't even one of my favorite Marvel movies to begin with. Which I know is a very controversial thing to say, but that's a story for another day. And I'm not someone who thinks every Marvel movie is the same, which I think is a ridiculous criticism, but in this instance, unfortunately, it is a little appropriate, as this specifically does borrow heavily from one of Marvel's own movies, and that really stuck with me while watching much of the film. So while I was entertained by this movie, and I had a good enough time with it, this felt like it was just borrowing from Marvel's playbook to piece together a film that was clearly just thrown out there because fans asked for it and nothing more. And again, not saying that fan service is a bad thing or anything, but I don't think this was the best story that we could have gotten for this character. And in some ways, it didn't quite feel like Marvel was fully interested in telling that story, which left me a bit disappointed. Black Widow is good overall. Not one of the worst Marvel movies, but also not one of their best movies. It's certainly entertaining, with some really well done action scenes, solid direction by Kate Shortland, a good self-referential sense of humor, as well as reliable performances from Johansson, Pugh, and Harbour. However, it feels like it borrows way too much from Marvel's playbook to give us a story that was clearly not the best that could have been done for this character. The themes of family didn't quite hit as hard as they should have, while the film's villain is honestly one of the weakest Marvel villains in quite a few years. To be clear, it's still an entertaining movie, and I do think it's certainly worth watching, but I still think there is potential for so much more. Black Widow gets a 7 out of 10. I know I criticize this quite a bit, but... Honestly, it's fine. It's just not as great as I think it could have been. Hopefully, whatever comes next for these characters, I just hope things improve and they get the storyline that they truly deserve. Though, let me know, did you see Black Widow or are you planning to see it? And what were your thoughts? Was this worth the wait for you? Do you have a favorite Scarlett Johansson or Florence Pugh movie? Let me know in the comments below so we can discuss. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it. And for more movie reviews and film discussion, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Thanks for watching everyone and keep having fun with film.